This is Twit. Alan Kay said, if you really uh, want to make good software, you got to make the hardware. Or maybe he said, if you really want to make good hardware, you got to make the software. But that's the point, is you need to control a full stack. And that's one thing that Apple's doing that really nobody except maybe Samsung with their Exynos chip is doing. Uh, they're it's gonna, been a rough few years for Exynos. Yeah, I mean, but they're going to make... They make the operating system. Uh, they make, and we'll talk about Big Sur in a little bit. But they made, they're making uh, the chips. They're making everything, and that's more than just raw power. That's a synergy that is very hard for a PC maker to duplicate. It's purpose built. Like they have, uh, when you hear Johnny Saruji talk about it, he says that basically their job is to make the fastest chipset in the world, given the thermal limits of that of the chassis, and that every year their job is to increase that performance, only constrained by the limits of time and physics. And when you have a company that's not profit and loss based on the chipset, which Qualcomm and Intel just have to be, but they you know they only care about selling iPhones and Macs. There is no PNL for that chipset. They can run as fast as they want. That puts incredible competitive pressure on the industry and i think when you combine them with what amd has been doing because amd has been super impressive with ryzen and now with navi too uh it's it's i think it's industry redefining this year i think we're going to look back and think that as bad as 2020 has been in some ways in terms of just silicon for, for the pc industry in general it's it's going to be transformative well, that's why i was and willing to make this show more about apple than it would normally be because i do think this has this reverberates throughout the entire pc industry I mean, oh, 100%, I, I, I just game. from a security standpoint, 100 percent, all of the uh, let's say nefarious software out there is designed to is designed to bust Intel stack. Right. So we're going to get a whole bunch of computers out there that are not running Intel stack. So we are starting malware zero. Like there's none. Right. So well, you know and, what I'm saying? And, and also, I, I just think that the there is no way when you look at the trajectory of, of this tiny little chipset doing what it's doing is at least in the rumors and we'll see more of the reviews as they come out but as we look at that and you and you mark a, tra a, po a, a potential trajectory beyond battery life just performance the pc uh industry has to do something like it or they or it's going to be very hard and to, who to would compete. do that nvidia with uh, they they're, i think they're it's buying arm I think that NVIDIA is buying ARM, but I, I don't know. I mean, to me, I think that you almost look at something crazy like Microsoft bu buying AMD, you know, and merging yeah. that together and almost having to go straight at Apple. You know, like basically you almost you have see, to own both of those. You pieces. see the problem they have because it, 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 if they do that, they they then completely cut off their OEMs. Yeah. And, and that is a that is a complete really change of their business. Because without Dell and HP and Lenovo making PCs, it's a very different business. So if all of I a think, sudden Microsoft says, and Windows now is designed to run on our custom ARM chips, that's a problem. You can't do that. In fact, I can't think of another company that's in the position. Apple is, with the exception of they'd maybe. Have to make, they'd have to build a consortium. They'd have to literally sit down and everybody put their big boy pants on and put their egos away and build a consortium. You need a consortium. That may of be the kind of Microsoft, response you need. Yeah. Microsoft. So I also think and like you were Yeah. Yeah. No, that, that you that's a very good point, Rock. I also think you were right before, Leo, like there, there is going to be people for whom this approach is anathema. You know, they just don't want an appliance computer. Apple is building, like Apple is not building general purpose computers anymore. They're building things like appliances. Like yeah. very few people care about machine, like being a mechanic to their own car. They don't care about upgrading their refrigerator. You know, they don't care about changing their television set instead of buying a new television set. And Apple is laser honed on that consumer market with a little bit of, of service made to pros, you know, at the very top of the end. But there are going to be a lot of people who just want to buy a case and upgrade the card every year. They just want to buy a case and upgrade the RAM every year. They want to they want to do it like a hobbyist. And Apple is not going to serve that market at all. Or they have very specific needs like high-end gaming that just Apple is probably not going to cater to. And it's the same way where someone says, you know, Apple is Sherlocking this app. And I'm like, yeah, except for cross-platform people who Apple will absolutely not serve at all in any market and there's tremendous value in that i think there'll still be tremendous value in doing everything that apple's not doing is there a well, risk to bifurcating developers so you're going to really i mean this is so already the case but it's going to be even more so you're going to have one category of developers that do ios mac os and then you're gonna have the rest of the world yeah, I, I, and there, like there's the not gonna be windows. much more crossover uh right like the height of windows again, yeah again i think that the issue is and i think that 
I, I don't know what, what was going to happen there, but I, I kind of feel like the John Hodgman ad at the end, the little John Hodgman thing, that little preview yeah. could be a preview to a searing. Like Apple is about to have, you know, they're about to have the high, high ground when it comes to performance. And we could, you know, I think we may expect to see more of those kinds of ads again, you know, where they're, they're not just positioning ads that make you feel good. They are going square and hitting, you know, the other, the other platform really, really, really hard, you know, because they have it, they, they, they're going to have for the next couple of years to, to get to, to, to Doc's point, the, you need to build a consortium, but that consortium takes time. It'll take two years to organize it. <laughs> then it'll take two more years yeah. to, to agree on things. Then it'll take five more years to build it. You're talking about 10 years of, of everyone trying to organize themselves around the idea of what to do while Apple doesn't have to talk to anybody, you know, and, and that is, that is devastating, you know, and, and I think that it's, it is, uh, so what you look at with developers is, well, I have, you know, for the average u- business user, 15 hours or 18 hours of usage time m- means a lot, you know, for the, and then as the performance comes out for the, the average 3d artist or the average video artist seeing, you know, seeing these crazy performance Im- improvements, uh, is going to mean something else. And so, um, you know, and, and then you take that with a searing set of ads that constant, constantly underline that. And it, it doesn't mean that Apple is going to take more than 10 or 15% of the market, but that's the most valuable 10 or 15% of the market in the industry. And that really takes a lot of the fun out of it for a lot of other um, PC manufacturers. Let me, uh, I should probably play the John Hodgman uh, oh, that was such a good moment. Uh, it was the yeah. one more thing on the on the one more thing, wasn't it? And uh, it was. But I just felt like that might be. I, at first, I thought it was just funny that they would add it in, and I was like, "Oh, that's really a, a blast from the past." And I was like, "Oh, I wonder if it's a a hint to the future of of how hard they're planning to." to well, swing. that's another thing I think people don't let set in. These are the slowest SOC chips that will the worst. ever <laughs> exist, ever. Right. Right. So everyone's right. by the way, it doesn't do it. these are the slowest SOC chips that will ever exist. So six months from now, when the M2 or the X, as Renee says, is going to come out, you know, when we get ready to build 16s, now we're at the next one. And then soon we'll be at the M5 and it will be at M6, which chips are invisible. Get it? M5, <laughs> M6. That's the MI6. And, and again, I think that I think I do think that the more modular PC uh could catch up at some point, but the problem is it's going to take them a long time to make the turn because it requires so many people to agree on something. And that is the thing that Apple is forcing. And I think that what we're seeing over and over again is Apple starting to really force the industry to do things they're uncomfortable with. 